Okay, folks, so today we're talking about acid-base titrations. So a titration is used to uh, find an unknown molarity, okay? The, for acid-base titrations, we typically use a known acid or base molarity to find an unknown acid or base molarity. So what we would do is we would have um, an unknown um, concentration, unknown molarity, of either acid or base in the bottom of a flask. And then we would have a burette that drips in, drips a known concentration, which means molarity, of acid or base into our unknown. Our unknown, we'd have an indicator added to it. And an indicator is just a chemical dye whose colors are affected by acid or basic solutions. So. Um, typically, like let's say I had a strong acid as my unknown, but I don't know the molarity of it, but I do know what it is. I just don't know the molarity. And so then I would maybe drip it with a strong base. When I do that, I'm going to hit an endpoint. Um, I want the endpoint to be at about a pH of 7, because when you mix a strong acid with a strong base, you should get water and a salt, and the pH at, at the end of that um, at the end point of that titration should be seven. And so I want my indicator, I want to choose an indicator that's going to vividly tell me I've hit that end point. Um, so, yeah, so I might choose something like phenolphthalein because the end point, I want it to be as close to seven as possible so that I know I've hit my end point, which might also be my equivalence point if it's strong acid, strong base. I want my equivalence point to show me, hey, this has happened. And the equivalence point is when there are equal numbers of moles of acid and base in the solution. So after I've dripped in base, so here I only have acid, but after I drip in base, I'll have acid and base that will neutralize to form water and a salt. And so I should have a pH of seven if they're both strong. So this is kind of a, a little curve that shows me, this is, I'm starting, so I have, um, I have acid in here and so if I'm starting with acid, it has a very low pH. And as I drip in milliliters of the base, the pH starts to go up. It hits a spot where it kind of doesn't change much. That's called the buffering region. Buffers don't change pH very easily. So um, I have that happening. And then it sharply increases its pH. And so it's very hard to see when it goes from like, you know, about four-ish to 13-ish, like that's a very, very sharp increase. That's why that line is vertical. So I would need an indicator that's gonna change colors at the moment it starts to go slightly basic. Um, so slightly basic would be anything above seven. So, okay. Um, all right, so that's this is a titration curve. This is a titration setup. This is how we would do it. And you need to know these um, vocabulary words, please, OK? Now, when you do the math for these, it's pretty fun because it's stoichiometry. And everybody loves stoichiometry. Well, I do. Um, so we're going to do a couple of example problems with you right quick. So um, what do I have? I have it takes. 35 milliliters, we're not super keen on milliliters, so I'm gonna change that to 0.035 liters of 0.95 molar sodium hydroxide to neutralize 75 milliliters. Again, not super keen on milliliters, I'm gonna change that to 0.075 liters of sulfuric acid. What is the concentration of the acid? Well, first of all, I have to write my balanced chemical equation because this is stoichiometry. The first step is to write a balanced chemical equation. So I have sodium hydroxide, and since it has a molarity, this has to be a solution, so it's an aqueous solution, so that's the state. I'm mixing that with sulfuric acid, so that's H2SO4, and that is also, I have a, it, it's, in, it's in volume, so it, and it's an acid, so it has to be dissolved in water, so it's aqueous. And so that's going to make water, because H and OH go home together. So H, OH, and water is a pure liquid. And then sodium and sulfate go together. So you'd have Na2SO4. And if you look up your solubility rules, anything with a group one metal is always aqueous all the time, if in solution. So that's aqueous. And 
let's balance it. Okay, so I have one sodium, two sodium, so I need a two here. Now I have two hydroxides, one hydroxide, so I need a two here. Two hydrogens, two hydrogens, one sulfate, one sulfate, done. So I have 0 0.035 liters of 0 0.95 molar sodium hydroxide, and I'm mixing that with 0 0.075 liters of, uh-oh, I don't know the concentration of this molarity. And that's what I want to know. What is the concentration? When you see the word concentration, that is molarity. Okay, so I want to know the concentration of the acid. I want to know the molarity. Okay, so I start with the thing I know everything about, and I end with the thing I don't know everything about. So that should be an M, not an A. There we go. All right. So I start with, I have 0 0.035 liters of sodium hydroxide solution, so basic solution. And for every one liter of that solution, I have 0 0.95 moles of sodium hydroxide. For every two moles of sodium hydroxide, I require one mole of sulfuric acid. So now liters of solution will cancel, the uh, sodium, moles of sodium hydroxide will cancel. I have moles of sulfuric acid on top, which is what I want for molarity, but I need liters on bottom. There's my liters of acid. I have 0 0.075 liters of acid solution. So I have moles of acid on top, I have liters of acidic solution on the bottom. And that's where I stop, and I put, put this in my calculator. So 0 0.035 times 0.95 divided by 0 0.075 divided by two. Okay, and so I have, um, in all my numbers that I was using, they're all two sig figs, so my answer should be two sig figs, so it's 0 0.22 molar H2SO4. Okay, all right, last one. I wanna know how much, when I say how much, what do you think that means? Let's keep reading, maybe you'll catch on. How much 1.4 molar magnesium hydroxide would it take to neutralize 92 milliliters, we don't really like milliliters, that's 0 0.092 liters of 1.7 molar um, hydrobromic acid. So when they say how much, they're asking for volume. So I have uh, magnesium hydroxide, okay, and it has a molarity, so it must be aqueous, mixing with hydrobromic acid, and that's aqueous because it's an acid and it's in solution. And so that uh, I get water, so my H and my OH go home together, and that's a pure liquid, and magnesium bromide. And that, if you look up your solubility rules, this is aqueous. Now we balance it, one magnesium, one magnesium, two hydroxides, one hydroxide, so I put a two here. Two hydrogens, one hydrogen, so I put a two here. Two bromines, two bromines, done. So I wanna know how many, let's say liters, of 1.4 molar magnesium hydroxide does it take to neutralize 0.092 liters of 1.7 molar hydrobromic acid. So I start with a thing I know everything about. So 0 0.092 liters of my acidic solution. And for, and for every one liter of that solution, you have 1.7 moles of acid. And let's see, for every two moles of your acid, you require one mole of your base. Oops, there we go. And I have the molarity of that base, so for every 1.4 moles of that base, I have one liter of solution, basic solution. So then my liter solution cancel there, moles of acid, moles of base, I'm left with liters of basic solution. So I just stick that in my calculator. 
So 0 0.092 times 1.7 divided by 2 divided by 1.4. <clears throat> All right, and so I have two sig figs yet again with everything. So that would mean that I have 0 0.056 liters of my basic solution. Um, or I could say that's 56 milliliters. Depends on what I'm asking for in the question. Okay, and that's titration. Have a great day.